In this lesson, we'll examine some tips to consider when using the input-output approach to solve questions with variables in the answer choices. Now, in an earlier lesson, we solved this question in which Garth owns a total of x ties and y of these ties are blue. Our goal here is to determine which of the five algebraic expressions represents the number of ties that are not blue. So, using the input-output approach, we chose values for the variables x and y, and then we determined that if x equals 10 and y equals 3, the number of non-blue ties must equal 7. At this point, we checked each answer choice to see whether it yielded the target output of 7 non-blue ties. When we plugged x equals 10 and y equals 3 into the expressions and evaluated them, we found that only one expression yielded the target output of 7. So the correct answer must be B. Now let's solve the same question using different input values. Let's see what happens if we let x equal 4 and y equal 2. This means that Garth has four ties altogether and two of them are blue. Using these values for x and y, we see that Garth must own two non-blue ties. And at this point we should recognize that we have a potential problem with these numbers. For one thing we have y equals 2 and our output value is 2. Also notice that there are several possible relationships between the three values shown here. For example, 2 to the power of 2 equals 4, 2 plus 2 equals 4, and 4 divided by 2 equals 2. As you'll soon see, these relationships can cause a problem when we test the answer choices. When we plug x equals 4 and y equals 2 into the expressions and evaluate them, we see that two expressions yield the required output of 2. Now this means we can eliminate answer choices A, C, and E, leaving two possible answers. From here, we'll need to find another set of values for x and y and plug them into the two remaining answer choices to see which one yields the correct output. This of course wastes valuable time. So our goal should be to choose numbers that will most likely yield only one matching output. With this in mind, let's examine some general guidelines to consider when choosing numbers. First, it's a good idea to choose small numbers since they're easier to work with. And it's a good idea to choose prime numbers since there are fewer relationships between prime numbers. Second, you should try to use different numbers. If you use numbers that are the same, you won't know the effect that each variable has on the resulting output. Third, it's usually a good idea to avoid choosing 0 and 1 as numbers to plug in. The test makers know that these are popular values to plug in, so they'll often create two or more answer choices that yield the same output. So plugging in 0 or 1 can often result in having to plug in a second set of values, and this can be a big time waster. And fourth, you should avoid using numbers that appear as given information in the question. Okay, now let's apply these guidelines to this example. You may find it useful to pause the video now and attempt the question before continuing. Okay, if we're unable to solve this question using the algebraic approach, we must use the input-output approach. So here we have someone buying some nuts and bolts, and we want to find the number of nuts purchased in terms of B, the number of bolts purchased. So let's choose a nice value for the number of bolts purchased. Well, we could say that Donnie purchased zero bolts.